Bonjour, and welcome to another video. I'm here in Antibes in France, testing this, the brand new Suzuki GSX AS. Is this bike ooh la la? Grab yourself a brew and let's find out. Right, so throwing my leg over the AS for the first time. It will be hereby known as the AS because saying the full name is a bit long-winded. Start up that five inch TFT. Looks rather nice. Oh, it sounds good. So we've got eight, 10 millimeter seat height. I can flat foot it. I am five foot eight with a 30 inch inseam. Ooh. <laughs> First off, it's, uh, <laughs> that motor seems pretty pokey, which is what you want, it's dropsy. So uh, we're gonna be going through the city but uh, the seat feels pretty comfortable, straight off the bat. Oh, brakes, pretty good. So we've got a 776 parallel twin motor, and it's a uh, 270 degree crank, double overhead cam, and that's making 81.7 brake horsepower. And that's at 8,500 RPM, and 78 newton meters of torque, I believe. That's 6,800 RPM. We've got Kyaba forks up front, 130 mil travel. Uh, I don't think they're adjustable. No, nope. and we've got a Kyaba link type monoshock at the back. We've got Nissin radial mounted calipers up front, four piston and a single caliper at the rear. We've got 310 mil discs at the front and a 240 at the rear. We've got Dunlop uh, Road Sport 2 tires and apparently they're a custom tire uh, developed specifically for this bike they are bespoke tires not sure if that will add any cost to new tires or not but you could probably get other alternatives it's got a 180 rear section oh we're going to all these little nadry roads um, electronics we've got a five inch tft up front that's an optically bonded screen so it makes it a little bit easier to read it's got an ambient light sensor so it changes from light to dark mode automatically We've got Suzuki's suite of electronics called Suzuki Intelligent Ride System. That includes your riding modes and your traction control. It's got a bi-directional shifter, so up and down quick shifter, as standard, by the way. We have pigeons. <laughs> What's the throttle response like? It's a little bit snatchy on that initial engagement. I don't know if that's just because the bike's cold. I haven't been riding it for too long. So we're in A riding mode at the moment. It's got three riding modes, A, B, and C, active, basic, and comfort. As far as I know, they all offer the same amount of power. It's just how they deliver that power and torque. So A being the sportiest and most aggressive, B being fairly smooth, good for touring, and C being kind of like a rain mode, softens off the throttle curve, and just makes it a bit easier to ride smoother. Uh, switchable traction control, three levels as well as off. Look at this, absolutely stunning scenery. It's a bit chilly actually. So ergonomically, I feel pretty upright. Not any weight on my wrists at all. The seat seems pretty comfortable, but we're doing a whole day's ride. So I will talk more about the comfort right at the end of the video. My knees feel fairly bent, but not uncomfortably so. Yeah, all in all, I think it's a, a pretty pleasant and very neutral riding position. They've got tapered aluminium bars, feeling a little bit of vibrations at around about five and a half thousand RPM just through my feet. It's getting a little bit tingly. Now this bike has two balances. It's got the cross balancer system. So at 90, 90 degrees to the crank, which is meant to give better anti-vibration qualities. So we're doing a bit of filtering anyway. <laughs> so I have to talk about that. The uh, throttle response, once you get into the higher RPM, it's not too bad. Still a little bit snatchy, but you can manage it. Whee! Bus. <laughs> it's chaos. Does sound good. Who doesn't love a bit of throaty action? <laughs> so here we go, faster roads. What is the bike like? Handles itself brilliantly. Feels very, very confidence inspiring over on the side of the tyre. And it's actually pretty chilly at the moment. But yeah, this is, this is fantastic. A cracking little bike quite sure how tight these roads are so I'm kind of erring on the side of caution a little oh yeah what's well, a fantastic bit of road this is loving this Ooh, 
but we are climbing into the mountains. I want to see mountains, Gandalf. Yeah, this is fantastic. Fantastic handling bike, and these brakes are good. <laughs> Woo! I just don't know how tight these bends are. But the bike feels so planted for the suspension. Really impressed with that. So the engine is really punchy low down, but it does seem to lose a bit of puff at the top. So quick shifter once you get going, actually not too bad. It's just when you're doing it low, R, low RPMs, it's a little bit, it's a little bit jerky. <laughs> what a great road. 50 pencing it. <laughs> wow, look at this. Right, eyes on the road. <laughs> Dan, don't look at the cliff edge. <laughs> it's not where you want to go. Yeah, so turning direction on this thing is absolutely lovely. Really agile. And yet, oh, look at this. That is insanely stunning. Wow. Yeah, agile, uh, but as Suzuki themselves have said, and you know, you do have to be careful of all the marketing hype. It's so stable, like in a straight line, even at high speeds. Ooh, that's a bit of a drop down there. Do you want to get, do not want to get that wrong. And we do have slightly damp roads and slightly gravelly in places. But gorgeous piece of tarmac. Just not sure the road looks a little bit on the damp side, but the uh, Dunlop Road Sport 2, doing very, very nice. Is it done up? I can't bloody remember. I'll have to check my notes. <laughs> Absolutely stunning scenery. So this bike also has a uh, slip and assist clutch, and I think it has the low RPM assist as well as the easy start system. So you've got the usual kind of stuff that uh, Suzuki had on their bikes. Uh, the low RPM assist just it detects when the clutch is being let out and just adds a little bit of throttle, actuates the throttle bodies. Oh, the roads are still damp. Godon, hello, Godon, my friend. Oh, look at the snow on those mountains. Absolutely stunning. Oh, so this is a bumpy road and the suspension just struggling a little bit to keep it all smooth. Oh. But it's not doing too bad of a job. Oh, I can see the guys down there. Hello! Wow. Just wow. Always tightens up a bit. Oh, crikey. <laughs> <laughs> Nearly got taken out by a bloody uh, Twingu, Twingo, Twingu, whatever. Ooh, rocks. That's something you've got to think about. And I'm always thinking of like microclimate, so under the shade you've got less grip because the temperature of the road will be a lot colder and I just like to ride a steady ride right they've I've caught up with the guys they stopped for me very nice of them these guys are all a lot quicker than me <laughs> getting cold. Come on sunshine. Come and warm up the roads. Please. Snow covered mountain tops. Absolutely stunning. Eyes on the prize Dan. <laughs> they waited for me again. <laughs> I'm the slowest in the pack. <laughs> These are tight old nadry hairpins. bike just handles it all with ease. The mechanical grip is really impressive. I did have a few little uh, moments but that was uh, in A mode I was just being a little bit ham-fisted with the throttle. Which happens you know but yeah it just tips in really lovely. And there's plenty of torque from that parallel twin engine. For real world, real world
world use and I do concede that this is not a real world situation. <laughs> I wasn't sure if we were stopping there. Rappel! Look at this! Wow, absolutely stunning. I think actually this is the most stunning road I've ridden, which is saying something because I've done a few launches now and but this, this is something else. I mean just look. You don't want to get that wrong, do you? <laughs> Tunnel. You'll have to be careful of the wet bits. Look at this. So I'm just going to go a little bit slower, but. <laughs> Slightly hair raising. You don't want to hit one of these bollards right in the bollards but this road is absolutely redonkulous this is now tracking photos and video tracking which is always a little bit interesting a little bit of a walk around so you've got the Nissin radial four piston calipers 310 mil disc Dunlop Road Sport 2 tyres Kayaba forks 130 mil travel interesting radiator shroud sort of comes all the way out there's your LED headlights and these side lights as well we've got bulb indicators but you can get LEDs as an optional extra 14 litre tank fairly comfortable seat a 180 rear section there's your single Caliper, single piston caliper Nissin at the rear. Somewhere in there is your shock preload adjustable monoshock link type. It sounds pretty good. This one's got the paddock bobbins as well. There is the beating heart of this machine and actually the Suzuki is kind of etched into the uh, into the design there which is really lovely. 776cc parallel twin motor, 270 degree crank, 81.7 horsepower. 78 newton meters of torque bolt on subframe so it's an all new frame all new engine for suzuki and this is the same engine and part of the frame that goes in the v-strom 800 different subframe there so here's the dash you've got three buttons to operate everything so it's really simple you've got up and down which does the little bottom section there so you've got trip meter trip two and then you've got uh, distance to empty odometer and voltage so you can go through that up and down. You've got temperature, gear indicator, traction control, and then riding mode. Press the mode button. That will highlight either traction or riding mode. And then up and down selects the different traction control. So you've got one, two, three, as well as off. And then your riding modes, you've got three, A, B, C. A is very aggressive and quite snatchy. B is my favorite mode. And then C is a lot softer. And that's like rain mode, essentially. Nice, easy switch gear, fairly light clutch. Yeah, mirrors are pretty decent too. 14 litre tank, fairly narrow, so you can get your, move your body around. Really big seat, actually. There he goes, Mr. Mossy. <laughs> you don't hang about. <laughs> so the suspension is pretty sporty. I think it's a really good compromise for the road. So it's sporty, yet plush enough to kind of be usable in real-world situations. 
you know we did we did do some riding through through town and also we've been on some really bumpy roads it's done most of it without too much complaint the uh, you can adjust the rear preload so this one does feel a little bit soft at the back and a couple of times the uh, the front suspension did have a little bit of a wobble on but uh, I think overall it's not too bad I really do like how it handles plenty of electronics with that Suzuki intelligent ride system you got the traction control which you can switch three different riding modes brakes are so the brakes are pretty good look at this insane looks wise I think the bike looks absolutely brilliant really aggressive you got those big cows that stick forward and the very unique light design that makes it very easy to identify what bike it is. Beautiful views. Yeah, overall, very, very impressed with this bike. I think Suzuki have done a really good job. And I think it does give the Hornet a run for its money. Even though this is more expensive, you do get a quick shifter as standard. Your bonded TFT dash, it's been very easy to use even when it's been bright sunshine you can clearly see what's going on i do like suzuki uh, these new generation suzuki dashes i think they've got they've got it just right keep everything simple but very legible the traction control works pretty well actually it's not too intrusive i did have a couple of moments where uh, i hit some damp road and the traction sort of intervened a little bit so let's talk about the handling i think the bike feels fairly agile while also being stable at straight line higher speeds. It's not too twitchy. I think the suspension has done a pretty decent job. On the bumpier roads, it does get a little bit flustered, but I'm talking when you're really pushing on, it does feel slightly under sprung. Mirrors are decent. Switch gear is nice and simple. I like the three buttons for the dash. You've got the indicator button where you expect it, the horn button where I like it. Clutch isn't super light, but with the easy, uh, with the sorry, with the low RPM assist, it is pretty good. So we've done 84 kilometres, and it says we've got 88 kilometres range left, riding at this rather spirited pace, which I think is uh, not too bad actually. So we're off, <laughs> we're off at pace again. <laughs> uh, braking, I think the this ends feel pretty good. I like the initial response from those brakes it's not intimidating and I think that's good for this bike I think the chassis is pretty good agile stable very flickable some of the other guys were saying they don't like these tyres there's not much feel from them but I don't mind them but then they are riding a heck of a lot quicker than I am so if you're an average motorcyclist like me, I think these tyres will be better. You could, of course, get some stickier rubber. So I guess I've got to come up with a conclusion about the Suzuki GSX 8S. So let's talk about ergonomics then. I've been riding the bike for several hours and I've got to say, I'm really comfortable. I thought the seat might be a bit too uncomfortable, but it's not. Look at this, absolutely gorgeous planes. Um, Right, concentrate Dan. Yeah, no no complaints really for comfort. Um, vibes do kick in at about six, but it's not too bad. The bike has twin balances, so they've tried to get rid of as many vibes as they can. There is, it's a naked bike, so of course you've got a bit of wind blast, but that's to be expected. It's clean air, there's no buffeting, there's no weird whistly noises like you get on the CB650. Oh. <laughs> so yeah, ergo's all good, my knees aren't aching vibes pretty good seat is actually quite comfortable suspension and the handling I've got to say I'm really impressed with this bike considering this is the middleweight naked category it's not going to be the sharpest handling machine out there but I think this is a really good kind of entry level um, sporty handling plush good for everyday touring commuting and fun on the twisties so sure the suspension could be a bit stiffer 
I'd probably add a little bit of preload to the rear, which you can do, by the way. But overall, I think it's a really good kind of middle ground suspension setup. And uh, I'm rather impressed with it, actually. Tires seem, they seem to be okay to me. They might not be the grippiest rubber, but um, it has got to do a lot of different kind of things, this bike. It's a bit of a do-it-all street fighter naked. You've got useful electronics, so traction control, riding modes, the easy start system. Although that, I guess that is a little bit of a gimmick. You've got the ABS, of course. The engine really is rather good. And uh, what I love about it is how usable the grunt is down low. It does lose a little bit of puff up top. <laughs> but sort of low and mid range is very, very nice indeed. So I think that probably covers everything that I could talk about on this first ride. And now I'm just going to enjoy the scenery. So thank you very much for watching this video. If you want to see more content like this, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Peace.